Last year, my wife and I did over $120,000 in sales of shoes, and this year we are on track to almost a quarter of a million dollars in shoe sales out of our garage, and that's exactly where we're taking you guys today. Behind the scenes look at our garage. So if you caught the last video that we posted, I let you guys know that we are in fact expecting a child. And if you've been following the channel for a while, you know that we live in the third floor of an apartment building. We rented out two garages that we worked out of, but we decided to make a little change. We didn't like the three flights of stairs walking up and down with a baby on the way. So we decided to move into a house that had a garage and I got to take part in my favorite activity, which is redesigning my entire workspace. And I got a, a pretty big change when it comes to my inventory system that some of you guys are gonna be excited about. So we'll get to that. But in my eyes, one of the most important aspects of your workspace is having an efficient workflow and having everything in order. So we're pretty much gonna do that in this video. We're gonna go in order from when the inventory comes in all the way until the inventory gets shipped out and show you exactly how the behind the scenes of this business works. All right, so we're starting off right here at the entrance of the garage. We'll say we just went out on a sourcing trip, cars packed in, we can unload the inventory right here. If you have seen past videos, you know we've been using a VA. We got a station right here to take pictures of incoming inventory with their condition, what shipping policy they'll use, and then we'll place the items in the bins that are right here to be cleaned if they need it, photographed and listed. So this is the incoming inventory station. It's also where we keep some backup uh, tape, labels, any anything that we need to uh, you know, keep on hand, stays down there. Same with up here is a little bin for extra cleaning supplies. I had a little bit of a magic eraser explosion, so it's kind of taken up everything up here. Uh, but this is where the extra cleaning supplies get stored. So after the shoes are brought in, that brings us to our clean slash prep station. Uh, we're not gonna go through every single thing that I use, just basically this the setup. I have these shoe racks because I have an insane amount of shoe racks, so I'm trying to find as many uses for them as I can. Uh, we have these shoe racks to store all of the things that we use, like towels. Uh, we use pool noodles and these cardboard things to put boots, to put inside boots when we photograph them to keep them standing up. Some sandal shoe trees, the uh, tops of shoe trees to put in mules, some, uh, some uh, wooden shoe trees for like dress shoes, some extra cleaning supplies down here. Most of this is just the cleaning supplies that we use to clean uh, thrifted shoes. Then down underneath, we've got a bin of small shoe trees and large shoe trees. You can get these at dealingwithdalton.com. I can't make a video without plugging the shoe trees. So if you need some shoe trees, prices have been slashed. Go get them at dealingwithdalton.com. Larges and smalls, but we keep them down here uh, at arm's reach so we can just toss them in the shoes. This cart right here, um, I haven't really decided what I'm putting on top of it yet, but this is an extra bin, or this is a bin of extra shoelaces. And then down below, I've got a bag of extra insoles. I don't swap out shoelaces and insoles too often, but I do like to keep them on hand just in case I need to do that. Trash can right here is self-explanatory. Um, this is a recent addition. I got this idea from Side Hustle Network, so shout out uh, Chaz. He posted this on his Instagram story, having the uh, heat gun attached to a foot thing. What do you call this, a foot thing? Pedal. A pedal, so when I step on it, it turns on the heat gun, and I can you know, use that to take stickers off boxes. Uh, right here, instead of having to pick this up, turn it on, turn it off, set it down. It's just one fluid motion. I got the box here. Stickers are off. One other thing that I keep on hand that I don't think I've mentioned, a lot of times if you do retail arbitrage or sometimes online arbitrage, they will send shoes with security tag attached. So I have a really high strength magnet right here that I use to remove those security tags. So having that on deck is important. Moving on, uh, one last thing I mentioned about the, about the cleaning station. Having it well lit, I do get a lot of light coming in from outside, but make sure everything is as clean as possible and you're not missing things in a dark area. Um, right next to it, I have a shoe rack. This is meant to slide in and slide out. So I'll pull this out in the morning as I'm cleaning. Uh, shoes that are coming from in incoming to get cleaned, they get put on the shelf to be photographed. And I have it so it can slide out of the way when I'm not using it, because once they're on this shelf, that's gonna bring us onto our photo station. This is the photo station. Um, I mentioned this in the last video or a couple videos ago. I just built this, uh, this cage, I guess, with these LED lights. And I have this little thing to hold a phone. I don't photograph with my phone anymore, but you know, just in case I want to use that, I can you know toss that lanyard on and photograph with my phone. But I'm using a camera mainly because these LEDs aren't great. They cast some uh, some lines in the pictures when using my phone. They're bad LEDs, don't match the shutter speed, but it works well with my camera. So I'm getting pretty quick at the camera. 
that's how we've been photographing things ever since I built this cage. So another bin for the shoe trees. So as they're getting photographed, the shoe trees are going in their respective bins. As these fill up, they just get swapped out with the other shoe trees. So instead of, you know, going back and forth, once they're full, those get flip flopped. And then after they get photographed, they go into inventory. A lot of you guys, because you've been, I've, I swear I've been hearing comments from some of you guys for years telling me I need to switch up my inventory system because I did have everything on these shoe racks and surprise, surprise, We've got box shoes here, but if I slide this out of the way, I switched over to the box inventory system. Um, I'm not gonna explain it too much because there's a billion videos on YouTube explaining this inventory system. This is like the inventory system for clothing resellers. And I will be honest with you guys, I completely uh, neglected looking into how much space doing this saves because I had those shoe racks that all the shoes were on and that filled up probably half of the garage at the old place. I bought this uh, Husky shelf from Home Depot. It's 90 inches, uh, 90 inches long and 24 inches deep. And I bought 40 inch by eight inch by eight inch boxes. And these can hold quite a bit of shoes. I could probably fit one more in here. I think I pulled some out, but between like 12 and 15 pairs of shoes per box, 10 boxes per shelf, um, you can do the math, but it holds a lot of shoes. All of the shoes that I have in inventory didn't fill up this shelf. It's over like 500-ish pairs of shoes, I think. Like the go-to box for the clothing resellers are 30 inches. So I bought some of those before I realized Uline sells 40 inch boxes. Um, so the 30 inch boxes don't hold quite as much. So as these empty out, I'm gonna swap them out for the 40 inch boxes. But this inventory system, I, I was sleeping on it. Uh, it's in sequential order. So all of the oldest inventory is gonna be at the top left. And as stuff sells, it just moves that way. All the new inventory back to our photo station gets these SKUs. The SKUs only get used one time. Um, so basically they go in order from one to however many shoes I have in inventory. Again, if you wanna see a completely in-depth video on this inventory system, either look it up on YouTube or let me know it in the comments if you want me to make one. I, I will definitely add to the pool of inventory videos if you guys want. Uh, but the shoes do go in these poly bags that I keep right here next to the photo station and then they get put in boxes and on the shelf. And again, everything is in order, so it's easy to find. And then moving on to the uh, shoes that have their original box, I'm probably gonna need to buy another one of these soon. Uh, but as you can see, I could probably fit four right here. And then as I'm pulling inventory, I can just slide them off into this uh, open area right here. And they fit, I didn't count, like 60 box pairs of shoes, five stacks on each shelf, three boxes high, and there's five shelves on each shelf. Um, I've got two right now, so I got like 120-ish pairs in inventory. Um, probably gonna need to get another rack, probably this week. But this is what we uh, have got to get started because as I knew that we were moving, I was listing less and accepting more offers, trying to get the inventory down so the move was a little easier. So we're a little low on boxed inventory right now, so probably gonna have to upgrade that soon. Um, over here, the only two shoe racks that I still have are for boots and shoes that just don't fit in uh, these boxes. The way I'm doing that is keeping it all at the bottom. So as things sell, I'm just gonna rotate them down to make sure that they are, the shelves are the heaviest at the bottom, the lightest at the top. Uh, some of this stuff does need put into baggies because I just had some stuff that wasn't in my original inventory system, like into the Sneakerverse series that we're doing. This is all the inventory we have for that. And then some of these are just some bigger shoes that uh, didn't get put in back. So these are only two shoe racks that we have left and they are for boots. These boxes right here are just a few models of shoes that we have a bunch of. Um, so all of these are the same New Balance, same Adidas, same Docs, same Metcon. So I just made stacks of those right here. Uh, we got a little bag for shoes that need tossed in the washing machine. And since I'm right here, the garage does get kind of hot. A lot of you guys, you know, roast me saying this is the worst place to work out of. But if you leave the garage door just cracked at the bottom, turn on an air mover, as long as the air is nice and nice and moving, it doesn't get too hot. I've been working out here all day. Uh, it's hot right now because the air mover is not on, but this thing is really good. Shout out Matt Easy, found this guy at the bins, hooked me up with it. All right, moving on from that, we have our Amazon table. We have a bunch of these tables because our second garage at the old place was for Amazon. So we had a bunch of the folding tables. This is my death pile, by the way, just, just ignore it. We will get caught up on this soon. Uh, we have a bunch of these folding tables that we can pull out uh, if we're doing a Amazon shipment. 
Uh, but this one will stay open. It's got the Rollo printer with the um, Amazon labels here. The computer, I guess we're kind of going out of order because we should have gone to the shipping station next, but we'll make our way around. The uh, computer can move over here so we can like put a shipment together right here. Got the three inch tape for the, the boxes. There is a scale on the floor down here. I need to get a table for it that's like this tall so we can just like put the boxes together without bending over, but nice little scale to, uh, to weigh the box, obviously. Uh, a few supplies, scissors, box knife, ruler to measure boxes, towel to, uh, you know, wipe prices off the bottoms of shoes. Uh, rubber bands to rubber band up the shoe boxes. I toss these in a, like if I'm replacing the box, say I buy a pair of shoes from Ross that doesn't have the original box. I've got some brown replacement boxes down here. These are from uh, resellingsupplies.com. We got a couple extra, or a couple different sizes. They are all stamped with the, uh, the side has been repackaged because the original box was damaged in transit. Uh, before I started getting these boxes, I was shipping them in boxes from Uline that didn't have that stamp on the top, so I was putting these in the box. It says the same thing, except it's on a card. So if I ever have a box that doesn't have a stamp on it, it gets that. Scotty Peeler. And then I also replace the paper. Um, say we buy those shoes from Ross, we put them in that placement box. It doesn't have the paper inside the box, so I've just got this paper cutter. And this is a paper towel holder that is stuck to the table. And then this is actually, like if you ever go to the doctor, they have the paper on the on the chair. Uh, that's what this is. You can buy it on Amazon. I don't know what it's called. I'll put, I'll put links to most of the stuff we talk about down in the description, but that's exactly what this is. They come in these little rolls. I got a whole backup box of them. I just roll this out, use the paper cutter, slice it, and then this replaces the paper inside the box. So we'll roll that back up. And then I guess we will go in the order that we should have been. And we'll go over to my eBay shipping station. So over here, this is where the, where the shipping happens. Uh, computer here to ship, Rollo with the four by six labels, uh, and then all of the boxes and stuff that we use. I keep the um, packing paper right here. Extras are down at the bottom. Over here on the end, these are shoe trees. You know, if you go to the dealingwithdalton.com and you look for these shoe trees, this is where they're at when they get shipped out. Uh, these are the boxes I use for the shoe trees. Everything else is for shoes. So we got padded flat rates for any shoes that will fit in them, some bubble mailers for any shoes that will fit in those that need to go ground advantage. Moving on over here, um, these are in order from smallest to largest. Um, the most common box that we've been using are the brown 14 by eight by six boxes. These fit any shoes that don't have their original box and need to go ground advantage. Below those, we have the priority mail shoe boxes, which are a little smaller than these. They are 14 by seven by five, um, but they're free from usps.com. We don't ship as much stuff priority mail with the, uh, the rates increased lately. Uh, but anything that's going like in like to Florida or a state close by is getting the priority mail shoe boxes. Then moving down, these are for shoes that have their original box, 14 by 10 by six. Um, not much to say about those. And then moving down, these are for the bigger shoes that have their original box. These are 16 by 12 by six. So say like a men's 14, men's 15 has their original box or some like taller boots. That's the perfect box for those. And then another box that we don't use quite as often anymore are the 16 by 12 by eights. These have kind of been replaced with the, the boxes on the bottom down here, but these are still good for bundles. Anything that needs, you know, a little bit extra height to the box, those are good. Uh, over here, obviously we got a little scale. If we need to weigh anything, see if it's, you know, under a pound or two pounds, um, keep that right under the table. Don't ever use this, or I don't very often use this, but it's a box resizer. I guess it's nice to have. Um, but that being said, that's the that's the shipping station. Let me know down in the comments what you would change. I just put this together. If you're watching this and you're like, oh my gosh, he's missing out on something that is going to increase his efficiency greatly, let me know. Pick it apart, tell me what you'd do differently. Um, I think that I've got it set up pretty well. The only thing that I'm looking for is a cart to put right here, to put the uh, the poly bags and these labels on, maybe a longer cart to put these boxes on so I'm not sitting them on the floor when I'm filling the boxes up and then putting them on the shelves. But you know, other than that, I think I got the, the setup pretty much how I want it. Uh, only other thing I guess to mention, over on the other side of the garage, that's like the personal side of the garage, but I did have that shelf over there to keep extra boxes on. Um, they're kind of on the bottom behind my death pile. You can't really see them, but 
The shelf on the left is for like extra supplies that don't fit there, don't really have a place. That is our garage that we sell a crap ton of shoes out of every single year. So again, let me know your thoughts. Let me know if you change anything. Uh, if you want to see an inventory system video, let me know. I think we're gonna do a uh, in-depth shipping video update. I haven't made one of those in a couple years. So um, if that's something you're interested in, Again, let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more from the channel, I'll put a thumbnail to something that you'll enjoy right up here. Click on that, and I will see you guys in the next video.